And we as Muslims, what an insult it is to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when we select a role model besides him, Allahu Akbar Kabir. So this is why we say that let us be careful. A lot of the young boys, they don't want to marry. And if you tell them why, they are looking for a certain shape. They are looking for a certain complexion. They are looking for a certain height. They are not worried whether that person has deen or no deen, religion or no religion, good character and conduct or no good character and conduct. They are not worried. They are worried when I walk down the streets of Colombo, people must look and say, he has a beautiful wife. This is what is happening sometimes. Then what happens? People will say that for five years. Chalo, for ten years, they will say that. Then she begins to develop wrinkles on her face. Because beauty goes away. If you look at the outside beauty, it goes. But the internal beauty develops with the wrinkles. When you have the mother of your children, when she develops wrinkles and you have seen how steadfast she has been, and you have seen how much she has struggled and strived for your children and yourself, the more wrinkles she has, the more stretch marks she may have on her belly, the more she, she will be loved. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us an understanding. But when it comes to external beauty of a person who has no internal beauty, as they grow old, they become ugly. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding. So if we take a careful look at what I am saying, if we follow what the Prophet ﷺ has taught, he says, you want to marry? You look at the religious level of the person you want to marry. They should either be on your level or a little bit higher. That's a fact. The reason is, when you have children, you want your children to be spiritual to a great extent. How will they be spiritual if your own spouse is not spiritual? And it is more important for the female to have a higher spiritual level than the male because she is the one who is going to be spending more time with the children. May Allah grant us understanding. So when a man is looking for a wife, make sure you have someone who is on a higher spiritual level than you are or equal. Inshallah. Obviously, the hidden internal spirituality is only known by the Creator. But we can see the signs in a person, the conduct, take a look at their character, their conduct, talk to them, see how they communicate. Allahu Akbar. Such that when your spouse becomes angry, how do they react? How do they speak? Do they swear the biggest of swear words? If your husband or your wife happens to swear F's and B's, may Allah protect us. Your children will go right up to Z with those swear words. Yes, they will think up new swear words because that's a new generation. They progress as time passes. But if you, your concern is that, look, I would like my child to develop spiritually, then Islam teaches us that that will only happen if you yourself would like to change your spirituality upwards then your children will be able to also develop. Did you know that anyone whose parent is his or her role model has a far greater chance of success in life than those whose role models are someone else? Listen very carefully. I want to say it again. Anyone whose role model is one of the two parents has a far greater chance of success in this life than someone whose role model is someone else. And at the next level, your teacher, the one who teaches you, the one who has educated you, if those whose role models are those who taught them, also stand a great chance of seeing and witnessing success. Because it is someone genuine, someone there. When it comes to the parents, someone who's there every day, you see their whole life. And you live with them so you know their qualities because they are your role models you now want to be like them 24 7 when it comes to a role model who is on a television you don't see them living you only know them for the moment they are on that program 
But when they are living with you, you see everything. That is why we in Islam are taught that the Sahaba, radiallahu anhum, the companions of the Prophet, have a level nobody else can reach. Because they were known as companions. They were in the company of the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa They spent time watching his 24-7 day. They knew how he did what he did. So they were, each one of them, superstars. Why? Because they lived with the superstar, the best of creation, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That is what made them companions. They were not just known as friends. Nowhere in the books of hadith will you find a description saying that those are the friends, meaning using the word friends over the word companions. They are known as companions. Because companionship is what develops a person. يُعْرَفُ الْمَرْءُ بِخَلِيلِهِ فَلْيَنْظُرْ أَحَدُكُمْ مَنْ يُخَالِبْ A person is known by the company he or she keeps. So each one of you, be careful whom you have befriended, whom you have allowed into your company. Not everyone who wants to be your friend should be allowed to be your friend. You need to vet that. And you need to, you need to literally use a strainer as we use to separate tea leaves from the tea we need to separate the good from the bad when it comes to our friends disassociate ourselves from those who are evil because if we have bad company even if we are good that bad company will brush off onto us because we have been guaranteed that by the quran and by the hadith of the prophet and this is why if you want your child to be married, or if you want to marry, look at the company of your spouse before you marry. What type of people does he or she mix with? That will give you an idea of what type of a person they, the person is. When you have fish in the sea, the fish of one type move together in a school. You will not find one whale, one small fish, one kingfish, one something else all together moving together. No, there are fish who have something in common. They move together. The same applies with us. When you see a people moving in a group, you know that they have something in common. Either they are on drugs together or either they go to the masjid together. May Allah protect us all. So when looking for a spouse, look at the friends of a spouse. This is what will help you. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, you also need to look at the family. The family meaning, what type of people are they? What type of people are they? And he says that there are certain qualities that generally people look at. Some people look at the wealth. Some people look at the lineage, which is the family. Some people look at the beauty. And some people look at the religious level. Then he says, become successful by making the religious level the main deciding factor. What does that mean? That means it is not wrong to look at how good looking the girl is. It's not wrong. You can. But if she has no religion, then opt for someone else. You can compromise the first three things, but don't ever compromise the last thing. Some of the youngsters, when I have spoken on this topic in the past, they've come to me and told me, so what do you mean we must marry someone whom we don't even like what they look like? I said, no, that's not true. The hadith says, look at everything. Consider everything, but your final deciding factor must be religion. For example, you find someone, they are not acceptable the way they portray themselves or maybe the way they look, according to your taste. But at the same time, their religious level is very high. We are not telling you to marry them, but we are telling you, you can get someone else who might look in your eyes a little bit better, but their religious level is similar to that. And if you continue hunting, you will find, subhanallah, you will find. And you should know that beauty lies in the eyes of the beholder. Some people might like a certain type of look, whereas others might consider that not good looking. Then you have what we consider extremely good looking others might consider it not good looking and do not let your deciding factor be the movie stars 
because you will be living in a constant dream and you will be losing and lacking contentment throughout your life. Even the movie stars, when they have a child or two, what happens? You find a wrinkle or two, a stretch mark or two, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding, then sometimes they themselves also have to give it up. They have to give it up. So, in Islam, we have a very broad understanding of what to look at. And we are guided in the right light to say, look, try and make your decisions and make them correctly. Knowing that when you have based your decision on religion or on the level of character and conduct, the spirituality of an individual, that is bound to improve as the days pass. But if it is based on wealth, there is no guarantee that that is going to stay. If it is based on looks, there is no guarantee that that is going to stay. And if it is based on anything else, for example, the dignity of a person, Allah can take away the dignity of anyone at any time, if He so wishes. May Allah protect our dignity. And may He grant us all a level of piety. <coughs> when it comes to a role model who is on a television, you don't see them living. You only know them for the moment they are on that program. But when they are living with you, you see everything. That is why we in Islam are taught that the Sahaba, radiallahu anhum, the companions of the Prophet, have a level nobody else can reach. Because they were known as companions. They were in the company of the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They spent time watching his 24-7 day. They knew how he did what he did. So they were, each one of them, superstars. Why? Because they lived with the superstar, the best of creation, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That is what made them companions. They were not just known as friends. Nowhere in the books of hadith will you find a description saying that those are the friends, meaning using the word friends over the word companions. They are known as companions. Because companionship is what develops a person. يُعْرَفُ الْمَرْءُ بِخَلِيلِهِ فَلْيَنْظُرْ أَحَدُكُمْ مَنْ يُخَالِمْ A person is known by the company he or she keeps. So each one of you, be careful whom you have befriended, whom you have allowed into your company. Not everyone who wants to be your friend should be allowed to be your friend. You need to vet that. And you need to, you need to literally... Use a strainer as we use to separate tea leaves from the tea. We need to separate the good from the bad when it comes to our friends. Disassociate ourselves from those who are evil. Because if we have bad company, even if we are good, that bad company will brush off onto us because we have been guaranteed that by the Quran and by the hadith of the Prophet. And this is why. If you want your child to be married, or if you want to marry, look at the company of your spouse before you marry. What type of people does he or she mix with? That will give you an idea of what type of a person they, the person is. When you have fish in the sea, the fish of one type move together in a school. You will not find one whale, one small fish, one kingfish, one something else all together moving together. No, there are fish who have something in common, they move together. The same applies with us. When you see a people moving in a group, you know that they have something in common. Either they are on drugs together or either they go to the masjid together. May Allah protect us all. So, when looking for a spouse, look at the friends of a spouse. This is what will help you. The Prophet ﷺ says, you also need to look at the family. The family meaning, what type of people are they? What type of people are they? And he says that there are certain qualities that generally people look at. Some people look at the wealth. Some people look at the lineage, which is the family. Some people look at the beauty. And some people look at the religious level. Then he says, become successful by making the religious level the main deciding factor. What does that mean? That means it is not wrong to look at how good looking the girl is. 
It's not wrong. You can. But if she has no religion, then opt for someone else. You can compromise the first three things, but don't ever compromise the last thing. Some of the youngsters, when I have spoken on this topic in the past, they've come to me and told me, so what do you mean we must marry someone whom we don't even like what they look like? I said, no, that's not true. The hadith says, look at everything. Consider everything, but your final deciding factor must be religion. For example, you find someone, they are not acceptable the way they portray themselves or maybe the way they look, according to your taste. But at the same time, their religious level is very high. We are not telling you to marry them, but we are telling you, you can get someone else who might look in your eyes a little bit better, but their religious level is similar to that. And if you continue hunting, you will find, subhanallah, you will find. And you should know that beauty lies in the eyes of the beholder. Some people might like a certain type of look, whereas others might consider that not good looking. Then you have what we consider extremely good looking, others might consider it not good looking. And do not let your deciding factor be the movie stars, because you will be living in a constant dream and you will be losing and lacking contentment throughout your life. Even the movie stars, when they have a child or two, what happens? You find a wrinkle or two, a stretch mark or two, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding, then sometimes they themselves also have to give it up. They have to give it up. So, in Islam, we have a very broad understanding of what to look at. And we are guided in the right light to say, look, try and make your decisions and make them correctly. Knowing that when you have based your decision on religion or on the level of character and conduct, the spirituality of an ind individual, that is bound to improve as the days pass. But if it is based on wealth, there is no guarantee that that is going to stay. If it is based on looks, there is no guarantee that that is going to stay. And if it is based on anything else, for example, the dignity of a person, Allah can take away the dignity of anyone at any time, if He so wishes. May Allah protect our dignity. And may He grant us all a level of piety. <coughs> if we take a very careful look at the verses of the Qur'an, which speak about marriage, we will come across some beautiful verses where we did not even presume that these verses are actually teaching us what type of a spouse to look for. Let me mention some of these verses. In Surah Fatir, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about how He created the earth and how He created humans and so on. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, He says, والله خلقكم من تراب ثم من نطفة ثم جعلكم أزواجا. He says how he has created you from a seed, how he has created you from soil, from dust, and how thereafter he has made you into pairs, male and female. Allah subhanahu wa taala has created us. He is mentioning how he did it. And after that, he continues a, a verse or two later. He says, وَمَا يَسْتَوِي الْبَحْرَانِ هَذَا عَذْبٌ فُرَاتٌ سَائِمٌ شَرَابُهُ وَهَذَا مِلْحٌ أُجَاجٌ The two oceans are not equal. Very interesting. The two oceans are not equal. One side will be very sweet, the water, and the other side will be salty. One side will be drinkable, the other side will be not drinkable. One side will be green, the other will be blue. I know in Cape Town, in South Africa, there is a place where if you stand at a certain level, you will see a line separating the two oceans. Literally a line. This side is warm water, this side is cold water. That side is green, this side is blue. That side is 
sweet water, this side is salty water. And there is a line. Allah says the two oceans are not the same. Now why does Allah say that? When He is speaking about having created man in pairs, suddenly He speaks about the ocean. There are many reasons. And some of the Mufassirin have gone very deep. Very interestingly, they say that an ocean cannot be an ocean unless there is another ocean holding it up. So you have one ocean. How, how is it held up with another ocean? And the two are being held up, there is a wall. Allah says, وَجَعَلَ بَيْنَهُمَا وَحِجَرًا مَحْجُورًا We have put between the two oceans a barrier and a wall. They will not cross. The fish from one side will die if they go to the other side. That's the miracle of Allah. The water is different. The sea life is different. The marine life is different on both sides. Totally. But one is holding the other one up. One cannot do without the other one. I want to draw that example and put it into what we are talking about. A wife is only a wife if she has a husband. And a husband can only call himself a husband if he has a wife. So one is holding the other up. Without a wife, without a wife can you say I am somebody's husband? And without a husband can you say you are somebody's wife? No. So two are holding each other up. And they are two totally different people because if they are very close, marriage becomes prohibited. If they are mahram, marriage is prohibited. If they are sisters, brothers, marriage is prohibited. They have had two separate, totally different upbringings. But the two come together. What this one is used to, that one may not be used to. But the two are together. They are holding each other up. If one drops, the other one drops with. Allahu Akbar. Take a look at how we are looking at it. That's a miracle. Allah is giving us an example through the oceans. And He is telling us this. Then He says, from both sides you will be able to eat the fresh fish, the fresh meat of fish. So there will be different fish on this side, but you will enjoy the benefit of it. And different fish on this side, but you will enjoy the benefit of it. So husband and wife have different qualities, but the good qualities from this side might be different from the good qualities on that side. But if we join the two, inshallah, we will have something very great. And our offspring will benefit the most. Our offspring will benefit the most. So each man has good qualities. My dear mothers and sisters, look for the good qualities in your husbands and in those men who are closest to you in terms of your family members.